Happy 2024, and we are starting the new year off with a sell-off in tech. Yes, tech, not everything, not everything, and we'll get into some of that here in just a second. Hope everyone's having a great, great day, and we're going to get right into it. We have a couple charts to cover here, a couple things I want to mention uh, first, and then we will get into a couple chart requests and a couple areas of interest just to keep an eye on and watch going forward. So here's QQQ. We'll do some analysis on this and SPY. Then we'll jump over to kind of see what's going on under the surface. Let's start there. So right off the bat, we are falling back on cues. Look on the right-hand side, volume profile. And by the way, the volume profile, I believe, is only available on TradingView with a paid plan. I'll leave a link to TradingView down below. You can save $15 if you want to. Uh, but you can get a volume profile on a Webull for free, I believe, and other platforms. I like to do all my charting on TradingView, so uh, I pay for it. But there is a volume gap, if you will, which means essentially that we haven't had a lot of uh, price exchanged in this area. This is not a lot. And if we were to fall back, we can we tend to see price move faster through those gaps to fill in through maybe some orders and fill through uh, those areas of, of missing volume or lower volume. I don't want to say missing volume, but lower volume. Okay. So that would take you, if this thing fills perfectly, like, you know, textbook, I guess, if you want to call it textbook, that would take you down to like around 390 or so on QQQ, which is about 10 more dollars of downside, which if you equate that to percentages, it's probably about another two and a half percent, give or take, uh, to the downside on QQQ. So keep that in mind, but that is, you know, what we're kind of looking at in terms of potential sell-off, uh, at least first first case and then you know what can cross the bridge beyond that you know after that point um spy holding up a lot better so you see how spy's chart is not as nasty it's holding up a lot better that volume gap though is a lot further down from where we currently are at least it looks like it is if you go from where we are right now to get to that volume gap it's about a three percent decline Spy would have to fall about three percent to get to fill that volume gap pretty much fully which would be about 14 15 bucks so that's what i'm looking at that's what i'm watching and uh as as we speak you know, you have pretty, well, you had some decent volume last week. Sorry about that. Uh, on Friday. But prior to that, not a ton of volume. So the move up here was on fairly low volume. And, you know, now we're getting some better volume as we begin the new year. And people are starting to get back to the desk, back to work, back to everything, back to school, all that great stuff. If, it, if you want to say it's great. Depends upon your perspective, I guess, right? Uh, but so it, on SPY, we're still kind of in this uptrend and consolidation, if you want to you know, get super, super specific. Okay. Now, when I said not everything, if you take a look at this chart, I'll refresh it here. The Dow is barely down as I film this video, or the market's about to close. The Nasdaq's down about 2%. The S&P is down about 0.9. And the Russell's down 0.98, about a percent. But if you look over here, you'll notice that tech is getting, you know, nailed. We have healthcare doing very, very well. Consumer uh, discretionary, I believe, doing very, very well. Utilities, real estate, energy doing very, very well. We have even some financials doing okay. So you're not seeing a complete massive sell-off across everything, sell everything, run for the hills. Now you're kind of getting a strategic sell-off or a rotational sell-off. Uh, and that's actually, you know, you'd want to see you know, if, if you're bullish on the markets into this year, you know, you, it's not a bad thing to see a rotation. If you look over at like XLV, which is the healthcare ETF. Check it out. I mean, that's breaking out to a new high. Well, I got to want to say a new, I guess a new high, a yeah, new high of the year. Yeah, pretty obvious. It's a new high of the year. Well, the year just began. No shit. Uh, but okay, either way, you have essentially a breakout over the highs that we haven't been able to break for you know, 12 months. Now it's coming up into an area we have seen it spike a couple of times and get rejected. But I mean, if you look at this healthcare ETF, by the way, let's go to a monthly chart. Check out this monthly chart. Check out this monthly chart. Huh? What do you think? Looks pretty good to me. I mean, this actually looks really good. And this looks like you're going to get a breakout here. So you can draw a trend line to it. I don't know if you really want to. You can draw kind of a horizontal level at the highs. Either way, this does look promising. And if it occurs on high volume, which we have yet to see yet, if it occurs on high volume, that could be a sign of the next leg here on XLV. Which again, is XLV the overall market? No, it's a sector of the market, but that's a good sign because this has been a consolidating sector for a long time now. And that would be a good sign to continue the bull market, right? And on the bigger time frames going forward. So that's kind of what I'm seeing. Uh, just off the top of my head, I, I noticed that and I want to at least bring it up and mention it. Uh, a couple other things that I do want to mention as well. 
That brings me over to the 10 year and the dollar. Those have been bouncing up on pretty big, pretty big way. The 10 years up about 2%. It was up more spiked up and then it fell back off. We'll see how this holds up. Again, not super surprising because we've been trending down for some time. You're going to get bounce backs in this trend down, which is not, again, super surprising. The dollar, though, also not super surprising because it was a pretty key level that it broke down to and is now bouncing. The key is going to be here in the dollar. Does the trend to the downside hold and continue? If that occurs, I mean, then you have, this is an opportunity to look at this as a potential reversal opportunity to get back to the downside and even a bigger breakdown uh, going forward, which would get as we've talked about in past videos, would get you excited about gold and silver, potentially even Bitcoin. Again, Bitcoin's doing well, which I'll pull that up here too, uh, into the rest of the year, which on the bigger time frames could be very interesting. Here's Bitcoin breaking out of its consolidation flag, if you want to call it that. And uh, it broke out, but then it fell right back off. So it just tagged just about 46,000, just underneath or something like that. And then it fell back to the downside a little bit. Not a ton. It's down sitting right now around 45,000, right, right about as we speak, uh, as I film this video. You've had higher lows. You've had lower highs. So you've been kind of consolidating and starting to coil up a little bit. And then you had what looked to be decent volume on the breakout to the upside. So that's the look there. If this unwinds and falls back off, that would not be a great look if it falls back in the low 40s. So we'll have to watch that in the coming days. But overall, Bitcoin does look like it wants to at least push. Now, you're getting a sell-off day in cross-tech and the risk-on stocks. Maybe that's affecting it a little bit sentiment-wise. Uh, you're not seeing kind of a euphoric pile on in. Go, 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 Bitcoin to a million. Uh, but either way, uh, something to be paying attention to. Okay, start requests. So first one is ALB. Let's pull it up and see what we got on ALB. If I zoom out, we had, must have talked about the stock at some point in the past because I have it charted. So key area was this white band across our screen. A lot of consolidation and, and really kind of a inflection point multiple times on ALB. We are currently below that. So it's done well the past couple of weeks, I guess since December or about a month, but it's inside of a consolidation right now. So if you ask me, what I'd want to see is ALB holding and then breaking the top of this consolidation. Next area to look for would be up into this band, I would say. So you're going to be looking up towards 172 up to about 190. Yeah, you can even call it 170 to 190 if you really want to get you know wider on that band. But that would be the spot if this breaks to the upside. If not, there, there's volume down here, very strong volume here. Wouldn't be surprised if he fell back down to about 125, maybe 130, 125 would be kind of an area to watch if, it, if this fails. But if the strength is there, then this is the potential breakout to the upside for a move up towards that band on ALB. That's what I would say. So that's a look. SQM is next. And we have two more after this. We had a bunch of highs right here that it could not breach back in 2022. And since then, I'm not really going to bother too, too. Well, actually, you can. You can. I was going to say this is not going to be, I, I, I don't know about this trend line, but no, you have three touches. You do have three touches on the trend line. So let me get rid of this box because it's you know, a while ago. You've got three touches. So your first touch is up here, second touch about here, well, almost four, right? Almost a second touch there, a third touch here, and then you just had a fourth touch right there. So that's actually a very valid trend in my opinion. Now, pullbacks could be targeting this volume node right here, which is around 53. Well, actually that's gone. Sorry, must be because I zoomed in. If I zoom back out, yeah, watch. If I zoom back out, that's going to show. Either way, that's still what I would look at. I would still, yeah, I would look at that, that volume node right there. That's a pretty much pull back to the top end of the consolidation where it broke out to the upside. So looking for, if it pulls back, it could pull back into the mid to low 50s. But this breakout is going to be up, up over 64. Really over the high that we saw uh, a few days back, that's the key spot. If that goes... This could be looking for a nice move to the upside. I'd be looking at some of these gaps to fill first. There's one, maybe up towards 71, then beyond that, maybe even up towards 83 could be the next target to watch. And then I would be also looking at, on the breaks, these prior touches at the trend line. These highs are notable to me as key levels, and they generally will, will coincide with some of these volume nodes as well on the right-hand side. So that's kind of my look on that. Starbucks SBUX is the next one. This one actually is breaking down uh, kind of like a, a bear flag, Short, a very small one. But if you zoom in enough, you can see it pretty nicely, right? Had you know decent move down, pop back up, break down, little bear flag, break down. 
And inside of this move, right, big picture, Starbucks is kind of in the, I don't want to say it's in the middle of nowhere, but if you zoom out, you've got lows of last year down around nine, just under 90 bucks. You've got highs up around 115, but generally speaking, you're struggling to break up over 110. So you're kind of, well, you're not kind of, you are skewed towards the lower end of that consolidation and you don't have a ton of volume. I've zoomed out, I got to zoom out far for more volume here, but you don't have a ton of volume, you know, to, to work with. Big, big picture. If we do break down, you know, mid to upper 80s could be an area to watch to feel through. But if you zoom back in, you know, let's see if, if we were to bounce on Starbucks, which again, we are making lower highs and now looking at lower lows as of late. So you don't really have that. You, 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 this 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 kind of skews. Sorry if your dog's barking in the background. It kind of skews me to think that we may be seeing more downside here on Starbucks if it can't regain to the upside here shortly. It's going to struggle to get back above this ninety nine to one hundred dollars psychological level, and then beyond that, you're probably going to need to get back up over this volume node over one hundred two, and then test these highs one hundred seven fifty or something along those lines. So that's the the look on Starbucks. Palantir question was asked, is it possible for Palantir to get back 13 to 15? That wouldn't be super surprising. Uh, I think 15, very doable. 13, yeah, that's a, I don't want to say it's a stretch, but that's going to be a little more challenging to get to. Uh, but that range is very doable. Why? Because you look good. You're making lower highs, right? And now you're making lower lows. You just made a pr pretty nice breakdown underneath here on Palantir, which is around 17 bucks. You broke down below 17, which is great for the, for, I guess for shorts, for momentum. And, but it's, there's going to be like, this is where like this area is just looking at like bounce zone. It's like bounce central as you fall into the 15. So you're currently above 16. If you, as you fall below, below uh, 16, this is like bounce central. Why? There's just so many times that Palantir has bounced over the past, you know, six to eight months. Uh, it's bounced out of that area, but if you put pressure on it and we see, you know, lower highs continue, lower lows continue, or a bigger market sell-off, a broader market sell-off, oh yeah, it can totally break down. It's probably going to need some volume and it's probably going to need to, uh, I would imagine, uh, consolidate before. It's not just going to, yeah, it could, I guess, but better better chances of that being like more of a slow move and then eventually putting pressure, boom, and then going for it uh, if you're going to break below this 1350. So this does look promising for the short uh, if the time comes. But I don't see that as a personally as a look to me because, you know, I see some higher lows for now. Bigger picture on Palantir. Uh, with that said, the platform we're using right here is TradingView. If you want a place to do your charting analysis, there'll be a link to get up to $15 off of that below, as well as a bunch of other resources and links. One of my favorites is right now TradeZell. It's where I track, journal, chart all of my trades, and uh, it's a Literally the best place when it comes to tracking and journaling your trades if you're looking to uh, take your trading to the next level. Links to all those down below. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a like. Consider subscribing. Leave your chart requests, like usual, in the comments. And I'll get back to those as soon as possible. Have a great rest of your day. Peace.